Hey everybody, it's me, Vic. Today I wanted to talk about Wavelink 2.0 on macOS. I'm really excited about this, and I actually have two headsets to mention because headsets are a very important thing when you're monitoring your audio, right? And the cool thing is I got this one as, as a deal, like Friday night. I, I listened to all of it. I'm really excited about it. It's, it's the Beats by Dre Studio. The only thing is um, it's a Bluetooth headset, right? There is a USB mode, but you would need a cable. There's no like dongle for wireless or any of that. So it, the USB mode is going to be a cable connected into your Mac. The Mac that I'm recording on is a Mac mini M4. And so it has two of the USB uh, type C's in the front. And then I think it has what Thunderbolt four in the back. I think there's like three or four of them. And then the HDMI cable and then the power cable, right? So it's really cool. Now I turned on the headphones because I wanted to talk about something that will show up here in the um, audio MIDI. So before we actually jump into Wavelink, right? Like th this is something I wanna mention. And then let me get my Corsair Virtuoso XT. Okay. And this one is also a headset that you can connect in USB mode with a cable. Or it has a USB type A adapter that connects into the back of, for example, uh, my Stream Deck Plus dock. And what I can do is flip the switch here if I wanted to go into wireless mode but it, it connects to the USB receiver. So it's still technically in USB mode, right? And with this one, I've not had any issues hearing the audio the way that it's intended to be heard. And the reason why I'm mentioning USB mode versus Bluetooth mode is because if it's USB mode, you're not gonna have any sound quality issues, right? Now, as it was told to me, there are some headsets, I'm gonna put this down. There are some headsets that don't lower the quality of Bluetooth. And it, it's a Bluetooth quality. I, I, I don't want to say it's a signal. It's it's just that the, the Bluetooth quality lessens if you have the microphone enabled. So if we look here at the uh, MIDI input output section here, right, the audio devices, we're going to see that Beats uh, Studio Pro has two particular options listed. There's a microphone and then there's the headphone or it looks like a little speaker icon. So this is my input and this is my output, right? So this is my microphone. This is the headphone speakers. Um, the reason why I'm mentioning this and you're going to notice, right? This is, it says primary here and then I have it mute. If I unmute it, the audio is going to sound dull. There are some headphones that you have to mute the microphone in order to make sure that the Bluetooth quality doesn't lessen. And that's gonna give you that sound that you're gonna wanna hear coming from Wavelink. If you're hearing dull, boxy audio, disable the microphone on your headset. Um, and then you'll be able to hear the headset on Bluetooth the way it's intended to be heard. The reason why I mention this is because I spent all night last night excited to use these things on my Mac, right? Cause I was like, okay, it'll work like my AirPod Pro Max. They, they died and not a battery thing. It's the flex cable thing. So because of that, I, I needed a replacement and I got these at a deal, half the cost. So, you know, cheaper alternative, but like the sound was decent enough for me. I'm not a super audiophile, but I was like, I like to hear the bass. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, but I was getting frustrated because the audio was boxy and dull. Well, you have to come in here and disable the microphone and then the audio is gonna sound like it does in USB mode. And if you still want your microphone, right, and, and you still want to hear good sounding audio, then you're going to want to connect it into USB mode, right? You're going to attach a cable. And in this case, I prefer wireless Bluetooth. So I'm going to mute the microphone because I already have a microphone connected. And that is going to be my Elgato 4KX, right? Because I actually have all of my audio from my gaming PC routing through my capture card to my streaming PC. So if I'm using the microphone on my gaming PC, it's gonna sound as good as if I was using it on my gaming PC on my streaming PC. So that's the beautiful thing about, well, routing audio from one 
thing to another, but that's through my capture card, right? So it was like really, really easy to do. I have another video somewhere here on YouTube where it's going to show you the dual PC setup from Windows 11 to Mac. It's very simple and I recommend getting a 4KX if you're gonna do it or an HD60X if you're gonna do that. Um, but let's let's move on here. So we can go ahead and close out of the the uh, the MIDI screen, right? Because this is showing you your inputs and outputs. I turned it off. That's why you saw it disappear. And then we're gonna hop into Wavelink here. So let me close this real quick. And we're gonna pull up Wavelink. Now I like I said, I'm using my 4KX as a microphone. But if you are setting up your microphone for the first time in Wavelink 2.0 you're gonna to come to um, the first initial channel and it's gonna ask you to add your microphone, right? Um, and that's gonna be either a Wave 1, a Wave 3, a Wave XLR, a Stream Deck Plus XLR dot combo, um, and a Wave Neo. Neos do unlock Wavelink, which is, it's a cute little microphone, okay? It has little different color filters on it. I love it. It, it. it really matches anybody's personality. And it goes well with one of those like all white setups who's doing like, um, what is it? The, the wood theme. It's really pretty. I've seen a lot of setups with them and they all have different colors. I love it. There's the pink and the purple one and the blue one that catch my eye and the green one. Yeah, yeah, they're really pretty. Anyways, let's move on from that. I know I'm, I'm talking about products here, but like they're all, they're all great. Um, I love using the Elgato ecosystem, right? I, I could make content on other stuff, but I make content on what I currently use. And I hope that it's beneficial and helpful to you all. So that being said, right, you would come in here, you would add an audio channel. First thing you want to do is add your microphone. Once you add your microphone, then you can add in voice chat, system, music, browser. Uh, for this one, we'll add in sound effects, right? And then I would just go ahead and if I want it to go to stream, it would go to stream. If I don't want it to go to stream, I would mute it. Same thing here. If I didn't want to hear the sound effects that I'm pushing the button for, I would mute it. But if I wanted to hear it, I would hear it. And in this case, I'm not using sound effects. Um, and of course, if you are using sound effects, you do want to route it to your microphone effects. If you're using your, your main microphone, for example, through Discord or something. Now, if you're using voice mod, I've already made a video on voice mod. It's the same concept with Mac. So we're, we're just gonna skip past that because this is not a voice mod video. But you can add any of those inputs. And in this game, uh, this case, let's add game, right? So like if I wanted to play a Mac game, which I don't game on the Mac, I route all of my games from my gaming PC to my streaming PC. But if I was gaming on a Mac, I would come here and I would hit the plus button and add that game. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the input because I don't play any games on my Mac. I play them on my gaming PC and route them through my capture card to my Mac. Now, the reason why I do that is because really I bought this Mac mini for encoding um, and recording while I'm playing a gaming PC uh, game at full max um, specs as, as much as I can because I have a 4080 Super in my gaming PC. And so I wanna push the game as, as quality driven as I can, right? Because like, I love that. I love that immersion. But that's me. Everybody's different. Some some people, they're, they're cool with uh, just rocking a single PC setup. And I did that for the longest time. But it got to a point where I needed a secondary PC, which is this beautiful little Mac Mini Plus. I've been wanting to make Mac content, right? So I'm excited. I'm excited talking about this. Now, audio routing, like I, I mentioned, you come here um, and you can choose whatever application you want and route it. So let's see, do I still have the MIDI open? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and uh, add an application, right? We'll come here, add it to system. We would scroll here and then we would select the little put or check mark and it would add it just like you would in Windows. It, it's going to show the application here. So in this case, I'm going to also talk about the pro tip. So let me go ahead and start this again. And what I'm going to do is pull this up here. This is in the foreground, right? And I want y'all to look at my stream deck too while I'm doing this. So if you can see the little dial here, right? This is a pro tip from Elgato. You would come here to the, so marketplace, Elgato marketplace. You can download all the plugins that you want. Some are free, some are paid. Um, you're gonna wanna download the Wavelink plugin. It's free from Elgato. 
you would select input, right? And you want to go to add. The reason why you want to do add, and I choose a color icon so I can identify what channel it's going to. Um, the reason why I'm choosing add is because if it's in the foreground, I can just tell it add whatever's in the foreground to whatever channel I want it to go to. So that's where this audio routing comes in handy. So I know yellow goes to voice chat, blue goes to system, the pink goes to the music, and the purple goes to the browser. So those are my four channels, right? Like I said, the reason why you're not seeing the 4KX on here is because I'm treating it like a microphone. All right, so let's just say I wanted to route the audio MIDI to system. Well, I would, you know what? Maybe I can put them both on the screen here. Let me, let me do just that. Hold on, y'all. Because I want y'all to see what I'm doing too. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to this MIDI and I'm going to tell it, I want you to go to system, right? So now I can actually toggle here and then we should see that it routed it to system. So if I uncheck it, right, and I come back here and I tell, I tell it, I want the MIDI to go to system again, right? It, it should go to system. Let me make sure, hold on. I think it's being a little, oh, that's why. Wavelength decided to time out on me. All right, y'all, Wavelink decided to time out on me, so let me reroute it back to my prompter real quick. Sorry about that. It, it was not liking me doing so many things at once. And every now and then this happens, right? It's not a 24 seven thing. Um, right, so let me make sure that the MIDI routed over to my system. And it did not, so let's go ahead and uh, Pull up Stream Deck. So Stream Deck closed on me as well. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, it it's it's beta. So sometimes the beta app gets a little on the sensitive buggy side, but that's okay. So I'm gonna tell it I want it to go to system, right? So I push the system button, and there we go. If I toggle back, you can see that it's been added right here. Audio MIDI in the setup. So that's a pro tip from Elgato, right? And I absolutely love using this pro tip because it makes routing any application, whether I'm in Windows or in Mac, the foreground app just automatically goes to that channel and Wavelink and it makes things so simple. Sorry, I was looking for the, the one to toggle for, for my Wavelink here. But yeah, it's, it's very simple. Now, we're going to talk about the next part of Wavelink 2.0 in Mac, right? I can route all of the audio applications to Wavelink, right? So I can tell it I want Discord to go to Wavelink. I want all of my system sounds or apps or whatever I'm using to go to system. I want my music apps to go to music and I want my browsers to go to browsers. So like Safari and Chrome, because those are the only two that I use on Mac. And I wanna hear them all, right? But I wanna control the audio per individual channel for my hearing, um, as well as my stream if I wanted something loud or low, right? Well, if I use Wavelink Stream in OBS or in Meld, then I can control all of my audio in Wavelink and lower or mute or whatever, and it'll go through Wavelink Stream, and then it would just pick up Wavelink Stream as an output, and it would work but um, I can't control individual audio in OBS. I can't control individual audio in Meld. I can only control it through Wavelink and it'll output to Wavelink Stream. It's designed that way. Um, un unfortunately, from Sonoma to Sequoia, I don't know what Apple is doing or what changed, but I do know that as, as soon as they started using the M1 chips, um, like, or the M chips or whatever their, their chip is. It seems like a lot of people, and I was looking at forums and everything because it's like, well, I could use a program called Loopback or, um, I tried something with Black Hole. It just wasn't working in my favor. Um, and I could try to set it up as an independent audio virtual cable type thing, like what Wavelink is. But if that were the case, then it should 
essentially route right to the the audio MID I set up, and I should be able to loop them the applications to those individual sources. But then, like that, I feel like that defeats the purpose of Wavelink, right? So, um, I tried it. It was messing with my audio sounds, and I. Some people like loopback. I, I like the way that it looks, but at the price point of $99, when I already have software that should essentially let me do those things and, and doesn't, um, other than controlling it directly through that software, I'm good. Like I can use Wavelink Stream and, and set it up that way. I would like to separate individual audio if I could, but um, it's a software issue with Apple. It has nothing to do with Wavelink itself. Um, there used to be a way to do individual independent routing with Mac OS. And ever since the Sonoba software came out all the way through Sequoia, which is what I'm currently on, you cannot route your audio individually unless you use something like loopback or, um, black hole, or I think audio hijack. If you use those things, then you can probably loop those things through and be able to do what you want to achieve with Indivi individual or separating audio. Um, I don't have an example of that because I was not successful myself. Um, and I like to keep things as simple as possible. So for now, I'm using Wavelink Stream when it comes to controlling the audio on Mac OS. I know a lot of people were hoping to see if there was some kind of way to separate the audio with Wavelink. Unfortunately, at this time, no. But I have hopes, right? I have hopes that that will be something that maybe comes back to the future. Right now, if you want to route individual audio in OBS or in MELD, it's application-wise. So you can route the audio from the application and include the audio from the application or from the source, but that would be the only way to do independent audio at this current time. Um, I do have hope, though, that we see the microphone as an input, we see Wavelink Stream as an input, right? So I am hoping at some point maybe we can see Elgato come out with, like, the individual channels as an input, and then maybe, maybe we might be able to have independent audio again. But for now, no separated audio. It all goes through Wavelink Stream if you're going to do it the Wavelink way. Anyways, I hope that helps you when it comes to Mac OS using Wavelink 2.0. Thank you for watching.